All right, folks, welcome to another edition here of Crancis Corner Presents Zach and the Nose Week 14 of the NFL season meets Week 14 of the fantasy football season, which means also we are close to fantasy football playoffs. This is a monster, monster week in fantasy football. If you're close, if you already got your, you clinched your, your way into the playoffs, congratulations. A lot of people are not there yet, like myself. So we are worried about this week, making sure we have all the right moves for this week. But without further ado, let me introduce my partner in crime. It wouldn't be Zach in the nose without the nose himself at Spencer Nose on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it these days. If you want to follow or ask any questions, otherwise, Nosy, welcome to week 14. Which used to be the first week of the playoffs. Right. Of, but the gods gave us an extra week of, fan, of football, therefore an extra week of fantasy football. So this is it. The last week before the playoffs. As many would say, it's the playoff push, Zach. And we are here for all of it, trying to give you the best advice possible. We've had a hell of a year so far for those who listen you know, on a regular basis. And uh, I continue to uh, put a lot of work, pride in myself to finish strong. Because that's what we do on this show. Right. We finish strong and we win ships. So uh, let's get after it, my friend. Let's get after it. And we're getting close to that. You know, I know in the NFL, they have that thing that comes up every week, like in the hunt or in the playoff hunt or whatever it is. For us, it's in the hunt for money. We are getting close to money weeks here. You got to get into those money weeks. That's all that matters at this point. So you got to be happy and you got to be ready to go for these couple weeks. What we'll do here on the show today, we'll go over like we normally do the best of last week. And then we'll talk about the schedule this week. Me and Nose are going to go through all the games from Thursday night till Monday night to let you know who knows likes and dislikes from those games this week and talk about the fact that like no said we're a week away from playoffs and there are a ton of teams on bye this week also which is a big thing knows we'll get into that in just a sec knows let's go over a little bit from the last week um yeah. never thought that i would start the best of last week with these two guys uh but they're on the team together they both play for the cleveland brownies jerry judy last week Nine catches, 235 yards and a touchdown, and a two-point conversion in the Yahoo League that I'm in, 41 points. Big, big monster effort there. And Jameis Winston, 497 yards passing, four touchdowns, three interceptions, uh, including two pick sixes, which we'll get to in a second as well. Let's just start with those two guys, Judy and Jameis. Holy moly, if you played either one of them last week against them or somehow you had them on your team because of bye, especially Jameis. Good God almighty, Matt Nosey. Yeah, I feel like it's like 2016 all over again right. where we were just loving Jameis Winston for fantasy football purposes because he has the shortest memory of anybody. And ultimately, you know, we use a term on this show, gunslinger, right? The guys who just throw the ball down the fe uh, field fearlessly. And he might be just one of the ultimate gunslingers in terms of what we look for for fantasy. And... That comes with interceptions. Of course, those pick sixes had a huge effect on your fantasy week. We'll get that you know, down the road here. But look, Jameis Winston, as long as he's playing quarterback, is going to throw the ball. He knows no other way. This is a monster boost for somebody like a Jerry Judy or now an Elijah Moore. The targets are going to be high. And at the end of the day, they're going to throw that ball. So I'm suggesting this moving forward. If you have Jerry Judy... I got to be proven he can't be starting moving forward because they're obviously doing something a little special between the two of them. And so now Jerry Judy is a must start in a hell of a revenge game versus Denver, where he had four years where he was picked in the top 10 to be this incredible wide receiver and was a dud. But all of a sudden, man, did he show up that old team, Zach? It was unbelievable. 13 targets, nine catches. So he is getting the targets that we want, especially fantasy football nowadays. And Jameis also, if you had to somehow start him or you played against him last week, you never expected that to happen with four touchdowns and three interceptions as well. It was a, it was a crazy thing that happened there. Yeah, in, with in, him. yeah no, sorry. In a, in a two quarterback league or yeah. a super flex league, Jameis Winston is a beautiful, and I mean beautiful QB too. He's going to have his bad games, of course. But he's also going to have these type of games where they're just absolutely monstrous. Right. So based on how that game happens, their running attack is not so great. Chubb has lost a step. Ford's okay. But they are going to throw the ball as long as they're down in this game. So definitely keep an eye on it. And what we've learned from last week is you got to start Jerry Judy. you got to figure it out and get him into your lineup. Right. And the crazy part is with those two guys, as we move forward with whatever the other guys, the big players from last week, 
Number three on this list, plays for my team in one of my leagues, and I couldn't be happier with him. Tight end of the year, would-be offensive rookie of the year if there weren't a bunch of good quarterbacks, Brock Bowers. He had 30 points last week in fantasy, 10 catches, 140 yards and a touchdown, 14 targets. Antonio Pierce came out in one of his press conferences and said, it's not a surprise what we're doing every week on offense. We're getting Bowers the ball. We need to get our best player the ball. He came out and said that. This is a rookie. And my, my I mean, if you have in fantasy right now at that position where it's normally Kelsey or Kittle or even Laporta last year, boy, you got yourself a stud if you got Brock Bowers on your team. He's a star. We've seen it. We have it. He's the next great. And that's as simple as that, right? So over the years, if you guys have been doing fantasy with this gray ass hair that I have over here, you remember how far go back it goes with the tight ends that were the best, where whether it started for Tony G in Kansas right. City, then it went to Antonio Gates. I'm going off the cuff here, everybody, but Antonio Gates with the Chargers, then you led into the Gronk, which is probably the best of all time, in my opinion, or at least how he did it was the best of all time. Then into Kelsey, who is, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer. You are now putting, and I know it's early, but we saw it at Georgia. He was drafted to do it, and now we're seeing it in in the league. As long as his health stays where it should right. be, there is a trajectory of of Bowers that is to be one of those guys. And so, if you have him in a keeper league or a dynasty league, it is the, one of the greatest gifts you could have because that position gets so ugly. And Brock Bowers is that guy now. And so, yeah, you basically uh, Antonio Pierce is saying, yeah, we're throwing it to him, right? We're going to let you know that. Good luck stopping it. That's right. what he has done over the last month, and he's having that kind of season, and he's only a rookie. So it's going to be here to stay, Zach, and we'll be obviously talking about it next year. How low do you go to grab yourself a Bowers? We're not there yet. We're focusing right. on the playoffs, but I can't wait to get to that for next year. Yeah, it's really incredible what's happening with Brock Bowers out there. And you have him on your team at that position. You are, you're happy at this point. You got yourself the guy. Uh, next three guys in the list, three quarterbacks, Jaden Daniels. He had uh, 28 points. Uh, Josh Allen, 28 points. Russell Wilson, 28 points. And then it goes, and we'll talk, we could always talk about the quarterbacks, but I like talking about the guys each and every week that we talk about here on the show. Bucky Irving. Another Bucky Irving week. I tell you every week, I, I I was a Rashad White guy. I cannot believe what he's done to Rashad White and everything going on. With him. But 27.5 points. He had 25 carries, 152 yards, a touchdown, and three catches for 33 yards on three targets. He is the number one guy in Tampa Bay. There is no question about that anymore. Two weeks ago, I told you that. Right. You kept on starting Rashad White because you don't know. listen or you're just your team's muddy. But either muddy. way, yeah. Yeah. Bucky Irving looks all the part of a really, really promising running back. And he's one of the it players right now. He got banged up on the last play of some stupid thing, but I, I think he's going to be fine. So moving forward, Bucky Irving must be in your lineup. This right. is not a player who just is running the ball. He's also catching the ball. With the way ba Baker Mayfield plays, he gets the ball out pretty quickly to the running back. This is a perfect PPR running back. And again, simply put, you know, he's somebody you probably picked up early in the year if you have him on your team reward yourself by starting him week in and week out and again we're on the playoff push right now and i'm recommending him big time to be a starter like, he would be like a nose pick of the week type guy right but he's already past that he's point. Past it. like right no doubt obviously right so we're, we're past that that's where i put bucky right now it's and unbelievable I like name quite a bit I love it. I love this guy. He's great. I hate him because I have Rashad White, but I love watching him play football. So that's always fun uh, there. All right. So those are kind of your top performers for last week. Terry, uh, Scary Terry made that the bottom of that list also with 27 points. He had a good game, eight catches, 73 yards, and two touchdowns if you played him as well. Uh, and then some of your normals there. But that was that's fun. When Jerry Judy and Jameis Winston are number one and number two on your list, you know it's been a fun week in fantasy football at that point. So this week coming up, we have Thursday Night Football, obviously, tonight. We're going to have Green Bay and Detroit. We'll go over all these games real quickly. But before we go over all the games, uh, we talked a little bit beforehand about the buys. Oh, actually, let's get to one thing before we get to the buys. What we, me and you were talking about personally before uh, with the pick sixes at the end of the game. Uh, can you just tell the quick 30-second synopsis of how you followed my team and what happened in that game when I fell asleep on Monday night? So I feel very responsible for Zach to have a good fantasy season, although he's been doing it as long as anybody. Right. But we're partners in this thing, and I always got an eye on it. And I am, let's just say, a fantasy junkie, right? Like, it's 
my gambling. I don't gamble anymore. Another story for another time for the nose is past. <laughs> but I used fantasy to give me the action. And let me be honest with you. I'll use Zach's league to give me the action. Let me break this down really quickly. For those who knew what happened on Monday Night Football, Zach's team was down 12 fantasy points with five minutes left in a game where he was going against Cortland Sutton still, by <laughs> who had another eclipse over 100 yards. Right, right. And he only had Nick Chubb and Denver's defense. Well, let me tell you guys, to his surprise, when I gave him the OMG text, it was the Nick Chubb quick little five-yard touchdown throw, and then the beautiful Jameis Winston, the guy who we call the gunslinger, throwing one more pick six to put Zach in the lead, even with another catch down the road for Sutton, to win by one fantasy point. In a, in, being honest, in a situation where it was a must-win for Zach. Yes. He needed to win it, or he was likely not going to make the playoffs. But thank you to Jameis Winston for having 497 yards. But it was the two pick sixes. It wasn't. Right. It was the second one that clinched the win. But the two Denver pick sixes secured Zach another shot, playoff push, win this weekend. Let's see what happens. But yes, so, how good was that? It was. It's. A, it was an incredible thing because I didn't see any of it. But you and my brother are the ones who watched it all, which is incredible. There, and we like to say on the show, and me and Nose always say in text messages to each other every week while we're getting close to this, our favorite saying, it's an old saying, survive in advance. No matter what happens, just survive and advance. And that's what happened with me this week. I survived and I can advance to one more week. And let's go. We Ooh, got a, we got a go. game tonight. You know, right. Let's go. So we got Thursday night football and everything tonight. But before we get into all the games and we're going to go over all the action, yes or no's this week basically – is we're going to go through all the games uh, from Thursday night into Monday night. Nose is going to tell you what he likes and dislikes from each game, and we'll do that on the cuff there. But before we do that, Denver, Indianapolis, New England, Washington, Baltimore, Houston. Those are your bye week teams this week in a very, very big week in fantasy football. Nose, I know the NFL you know cares about fantasy football but really doesn't. But, man, oh, man, six teams on bye the week before the playoffs kind of start for some people or the playoff push. That's a lot to take in, especially with some of these big names on some of these teams. I love this, Zach. I love this for so many reasons because there are so many teams out there right now that must get a win to cl- to get in. Right. And on the reverse side, obviously, you know, if you lose, you're out. So to be in a situation where basically your stars of your team are not playing or you're going to go against somebody that is not having their stars and maybe they were a little higher than you throughout the standings because they didn't have that bye week yet and now you have the opportunity to maybe knock them off that pedestal and put yourself into the playoffs it's the best drama but my god it's not just six teams let's go over this really quickly all right you got Baltimore, who right now has the highest, one of the highest octane offenses. Obviously, Lamar Jackson is now on your bench. Derrick Henry is on your bench. Out of nowhere, Mark Andrews has become very startable on your bench. And Zay Flowers is on your bench. That is a lot of fantasy starters, okay, that you now had all year if you right. are them. And now, last second, you're like, oh, my God, I got to start a team without them? Denver. Cortland Sutton has turned himself into a wide receiver one. He is a great player that, again, has been just on fire for you. All of a sudden, that 20 fantasy points is just, boom, on the bench. Bo Nix, maybe you're starting or not. Other than that, you know, it's really the Cortland Sutton for me there. You have Houston. Oh, my God. CJ Stroud, Joe Mixon, Nick, Nico Collins, all of those players. High, impactful players for your team not playing this week. Jonathan Taylor for Indianapolis. One of the top running backs, not having the best year per se, but a solid starter week in and week out, not going to be in your lineup. New England, not much there. Ramon J. Stevenson, if he's on your bench, you're going to be okay. That team is a little bit on the rise. They need some wide receivers, but for fantasy for right now, not much going on in New England. And we finish it off with one of the, you know, it's been a long time since we could say on this show, long time. That having the Washington Redskins, yeah, I said it, on the uh, bye week have major impact for fantasy. It's been a long time. But Jaden Daniels to uh, Scary Terry, excuse me, incredible connection all That's year. Right. Like the maybe the best 
quarterback to wide receiver connection there has been all year. That tandem is on the bench. And my God, Brian Robinson looked really good last week with A.A. Ron Ekelar out on the concussion. So that's three another starters that were on week in and week out starters. So when you put in together Lamar Jackson and Jaden Daniels, two and C.J. Stroud, excuse me, right. three starters on every fantasy league that are benched the week before the playoffs. So God bless. Listen to the next yes or no's. And let's see how we navigate through that because right. that is just as wild as it gets for a fantasy schedule. Yeah, it is incredible what is going on there with these this bye week, especially before uh, the playoff start and this playoff run. A lot of teams on bye, but we'll do this. We'll go through all the games uh, starting tonight with Thursday Night Football. We actually have a really good one tonight, Green Bay and Detroit. Uh, that's going to be a fun game uh, just to watch in general, but a lot of fantasy implications all over this game as well. Anyone you love or, or dislike tonight – in this Green Bay Detroit game, because the difference also is here, and you just said it before, there's not a lot of kind of, uh, what can I say? A lot of leeway here with all the bye weeks. So a lot of the times you might not like a guy, but you might have to start him anyway. But Green Bay Detroit, what do you like? What do you not like here? Right. So this one's a really tough read. So Detroit's defense is really banged up. Okay. They're in trouble. And therefore with it being in a dome, I see the opportunity for Jaden Reed for Green Bay to have a really good game. Okay, so I, I, you know, look, everybody on Detroit, you got to start. We were just discussing it before we even started our show. Laporta is a mystery, right? He's he's really a tough tough guy to call. Last week, two touchdowns for the Turkey Day, right? Unbelievable. So I got him in my lineup as long as I don't have one of those top other tight ends. Uh, and and everybody else, I'm starting on, on Detroit. I just start all of their offense. If I don't like somebody in this game, it's going to be Christian Watson. He is too dependent on the big play right. for him to have fantasy value. If he's not scoring a touchdown, he's not having a good fantasy day. Whereas Jaden Reed is that guy that I would want. So for me, Green Bay, I'm starting uh, Jaden Reed and I'm benching Christian Watson and Detroit's offense. I'm starting everybody that you should be starting. Yeah, of course. At that point, you have to do that. Uh, let's go to the one o'clock slate of games. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Let's start Jacksonville and Tennessee here. Uh, interesting because if you have anyone on Jacksonville's offense, you're now going to be dealing with a backup quarterback. And in Tennessee, they've just been hit or miss every single week with those guys on offense too. Yeah, this is a really uh, weird game. I don't know what direction it's going to go in. Uh, all I could say is I don't like anybody. I, I'm going to be bluntly honest with you. I don't love anybody. Right. ETN, he's been terrible, right? Yeah. Uh, the running, the whole offense in Jacksonville has been very, very rough. And I now, now with T Law out for the year, I'm recommending nobody. If I had to recommend someone, Brian Thomas is such a star. Get him the ball. You know, like you know, that's that's the that's the response to that. But other than that, I don't want to waste time on this game. I don't want to be starting any Jaguars. And for the most part, I don't want to be starting many Titans, but the Jacksonville defense is very bad. So if you were starting Pollard and or if you were starting um Calvin Ridley, I wouldn't mind it. You know, it's okay. But other than that, I don't want to waste our breath on this game. All right. Let's get it to a game down here at Hard Rock Stadium. Big game for the Miami Dolphins. The Jets are in town. This week also. I mean, you look at the Jets offense on paper, that looks like they got five guys, maybe, or four guys you could start on fantasy. But man, oh man, every week I just continue to get depressed watching that Jets offense when I have to fantasy wise. Not fantasy wise, love it because they stink. But there you go. Right. That, Very yeah. huge ca caveat there. Of you almost of course. got you know, those people like, hang up on the show or whatever. Right. Right. Uh, right. I don't You're care. Loving it, but hating it. I'm loving it and hating it because right. I got Garrett Wilson on my team, one of my top right. picks. And the fact that one week he could have a pretty good game and then three weeks he's kind of absent in the fold, it sucks. And then on the Miami side, two is playing good ball, but somehow, some way, the best player for this Dolphin offense the last couple of weeks, dare I say, has been Jonu Smith. Don't dare say. Right. Yeah. So, so what, what do you like? What do you yeah, not like I, here? Yeah. This is a game that I don't want to talk about. I'm going to be there on Sunday. I can't wait taking the little one. Thank you, Campos. But the bottom line is this. It seems like if like, it's a very obvious statement if you're a good Dolphin fan. They're not throwing the ball deep because they don't want Tua to go basically put himself in risk with the deep drops. Okay, so they're doing the the, the West Coast offense, bang, 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 and Janu Smith is getting quick shots up the middle. 
That being said, I I still can't recommend ever. It's a horrible situation on both teams because they're both similar. Right. The moment you bench these guys, they're going to have that big game. So for me, I know it's very difficult. Devontae Adams and Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson has been bad. Okay. Yeah. That one's rough to watch. This is all because that offense is not clicking through Aaron Rodgers. But ultimately, I have to start Devontae Adams. If I have no other options, especially in this type of game uh, week where there's six teams on by, I'm starting Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. So the three guys I'm going to keep, you know, continuing to start, although I'm choking up on it, saying it because it's not really pretty. How do you bench Tyreek and Waddle? I know. Very difficult to do that. And Janu Smith has become a must start. And A-Chain is a must start. So you got those two guys as must starts. And of course, you're starting Tyreek Hill still. And of course, you're starting Jalen Waddle. Although, just prepare yourself. It could be ugly. But at home, rival game, really the backs are fully against the wall. I, I'd like to see Miami open it up against that defense. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun to see this Miami offense explode this week, especially against the Jets. That would be fun. And for Tyreek and Waddle owners out there, a big week right now would be a perfect week to get you set for the playoffs or getting ready for the playoffs at that point anyway. All right, let's head up to Minnesota. Atlanta, the Falcons are going to Minnesota to play the Vikings 1 o'clock on Sunday. What do you like? What do you dislike here? How horrifying was Kirk Cousins last week? I know. I know. No, it's bad. It's horrible. Like, what are they doing? I don't know. Like, I don't understand what's going on there because he's the type of guy, though, who will come back this week and throw for 350 yards. Right. And, and that's what's frustrating about him. What do we do here? Bijan Robinson, super solid, obviously. You drafted him in the first round. He's going to be in your lineup. I'm still starting Drake London. And I'm keeping Kyle Pitts on, on the bench if if possible. I'll keep it there. Darnell Mooney, hot at some point. I don't trust the situation. So let's keep it very simple. That's Bijan and that's Drake London on one end. And then the other end, man, that Minnesota offense is totally hard to, to pick up on. I know. Uh, I love the the town that is Jordan Addison. So if you're plugging him in right now for a flex for you know one of your starters, I love that. I do. Jefferson's a must play. I don't like the running backs. Aaron is not getting the job done, um, fumbling in an opportunity, uh, inopportune times, et cetera. Uh, ultimately, the two people that I trust, and I'm, I'm going to add Hawkinson there too if you have him and you got to right. start him, but it is Addison and Jefferson. Like it there. Uh, let's head to New York, uh, MetLife Stadium. The Saints at the G Men here, one o'clock on Sunday. What do you like? What do you dislike here? I like to vomit. Is that, is that an example? This is hor- This is actually one. a really crappy matchup. Such That's, a crappy this matchup. This is, you know, this is bad. Right. I'm going to say Alvin Kamara and just and, and Malik Neighbors, and then stop. Right. I'm done. That's it. I don't. I dislike everybody else. I like those guys. That's it. Yeah, Tommy DeVito, Tommy Cutlets out there throwing balls. Uh, next one, one o'clock game from the Link, Carolina at Philadelphia. Here, one o'clock game. What do you like? What do you dislike here? It's an interesting, the Carolina ones is getting a little bit interesting. Bryce Young is becoming startable for the for the real NFL, not not for fantasy purposes. He's right. doing a little better. Uh ultimately, Chubba Hubba Bubba uh went took a step back the last maybe week or two, but he is still volume-wise a top player. I'm keeping him in my lineup. Uh other than that, you know, if you need to start Adam Thielen, okay. That's the only other player in Carolina I'd start. And in Philadelphia, you're starting everybody. It, you know, it's that simple. Obviously, Saquon Barkley is right now the best in the game at oh. what he's doing. A.J. Brown is probably the most valuable player on their team, the way he stretches the field, although maybe the stats not, may not be there. But he's obviously a must-start. Let's see how Devonta Smith is. He was a game-time decision last week. I like him this week. And if he's there at home versus Carolina, this is a must-start. Dallas Godert's banged up. But if he's also your tight end in a full-blown go, I don't mind him as well. If Devonta Smith is playing, though, it is a notch down for Go Dirt. So just keep that in mind. Okay. I like that there. All right. Let's head out to our oh, second to last one o'clock game in Pittsburgh. The Brownies, the Cleveland Brownies at the Pittsburgh Steelers. A little AFC North battle. What do you like? What do you not like? I don't like uh, Russell Wilson for throwing over like 400 yards again. I'll tell you that. I'll start there. We're gonna, and then we'll work back. I don't have the, the exact weather report, but all I know is right now in that area, it's a blizzard as yep. we speak on a Thursday. So I expect this to be a much more Najee Harris type uh, offense, knock them in their face type of offense. But the one player 
who is completely now taking himself to a must start and putting himself in the argument of easily an R, a WR1 here is George Slim Pickens. Stud. We knew he was a stud. Didn't have the quarterback getting the ball. Now Russell Wilson is throwing some really nice passes. I hate to give him the credit, but he is. Right. So Slim Pickens and Najee Harris are starts for me on that side. And then we discussed the Browns at the beginning, man. If you're starting Nick Chubb, okay. But you are getting in uh, for sure at this point, Jerry Judy. And in many leagues, you're looking at Elijah Moore and saying, do I start him and right. because of the bye weeks? And I have no problem with it. And same with uh, Najoku. No problem with it. That being said, let's take it a, a real close eye to the weather in this type of game. It's not going to be uh, throwing the ball crazy down the field. Although, that's all Jameis knows how to do if he goes down. Right. So, it's going to be a game flow. My opinion is there's going to be a big step back in that. And this is going to be a much more lower scoring game than, say, what Pittsburgh or Cleveland did uh, numbers-wise last week. All right. Let's check in real quickly with our weather guy for Sunday's action. And Hold on. Look at you. And he's here right now. AccuWeather for, because uh, they have it on the site where I'm looking at the schedule. It's the only reason why. Uh, Sunday from Pittsburgh, from the stadium. I don't even know how to say their stadium name, so I'm just going to say up there. Uh, it looks like some actual good football weather. High is 50, low is 43, a little bit cloudy, no snow, no rain. This could be a fantastic day of football up there. That's how about a, that? By the way, it's still going to be cold as heck. Right. It's going to be beautiful football, the way football is supposed to be. By the way, the I two, day, the two days before. No opinion. No, but Friday and Saturday, let me explain to you what the weather is. 31 high, 25 low on Friday, 36 high, 32 low on Saturday with clouds and possible rain both days. And then all of a sudden on Sunday, 50-43. It looks like the uh, the football gods want there to be a decent game and decent football weather on Sunday. Or the weatherman's always off by a day. And we have no idea yet. Correct. We okay. know that here living in South Florida with the hurricanes. We know that right there. Uh, okay, let's go to our last 1 o'clock game from Raymond James in Tampa. Vegas at Tampa Bay, our last 1 o'clock slot there. What do you like? What do you dislike? Can we just talk about Bowers again for a long time? Please. That's a, that's fine. I'm actually okay with that. We want to just talk about Bowers? No, I mean, uh, you know, Bowers is definitely one of the uh, premier players on that team and probably the only player – I'm giving a start to everybody else is a little bit inconsistent. There's no solid running game. So it's pretty simple. Bowers is the only player there. And then, you know, look, Baker. Yes. Bucky. Definitely. Yes. Um, Kate Otten has become basically the Kate Otten before when it was Godwin and Mike Evans were there. He's not trustworthy right now. And if Mike Evans is a full blown go, obviously I like him as well. Yeah, I love I love watching Mike Evans play football, by the way, just in general. Uh three four four o'clock games uh on Sunday as well. Let's start with Seattle at Arizona. Uh I feel like just saying those two team names is gonna be a high scoring game, but I'm usually wrong with this kind of stuff. But what do you like? What do you not like here? Yeah, it's like the perfect game where you're gonna have to have some tough decisions, but you're gonna make you're gonna you're you know, you're gonna start Kenneth Walker. You're gonna start JSN. I'm telling you to do mm-hmm. that, and you're gonna start DK Metcalf on that team. I would leave Tyler Lockett fully on the bench at this point. On the other side, man, weird year for uh, Maserati Marvin, isn't it? It's a weird year. He has high games. He has low games. He makes incredible catches. His target share is uh, not what I would like if I was his fantasy owners. But you're starting Marvin. Trey McBride, 100% you're starting. And then the the running back position comes a little you know tougher because – Benson's getting a lot more run, but still right. the Terminator Connor is still the guy to start there. Uh, Kyler Murray, highs and lows, MVP talk, stats though, maybe not there to match it. But at home versus Seattle, I expect him to have one of his biggest games of the year. So give okay. him a start, no doubt about it. All right, I like that right there. Uh, second 4 o'clock game, 425 start from Inglewood, California, the Buffalo Bills at the Los Angeles Rams. Who do you like who do you not like there? Inglewood up to no good. That's right. Man, is Josh Allen good? He's oh, so good. I, I hate I hate it. How about how about can we can we just marvel at the fact real quickly that the dude threw a pass, a touchdown pass to himself last weekend? Like, can we just talk about that for a second? That was incredible. That was one of the most spectacular highlights that took Ever. so many pieces to happen. Amari Cooper is such a veteran. And he's like, he locked eyes on him. You know how many people would not throw that because of they like their jobs in the NFL, right? Amari Cooper, though, is like, I got some job coverage. And they made magic on that play. He threw and ran 
for a touchdown on the same play. Pretty incredible fantasy stats on that, by the way. Look, I don't want to get started with it, but he's got all the moxie that a lot of NFL quarterbacks hitting somebody down here in this market needs. He is a special, special specimen. So obviously, Josh Allen, you're going to start him. I still do like, you know, finally they're getting out of that horrible weather. Uh, I like Amari Cooper uh, as the one guy he's going to really throw to. And then James Cook is a must start week in and week out. He's just breaking long touchdowns. He's the guy that they're feeding as the season goes, you know, into that right now, the, the end of the season type of situation. So start those guys. Right now, the tight end situation, I would keep an eye on it or actually stay away from it in general to see what happens this week. Dalton Kincaid may be coming back. Dawson Knox really doesn't get the the, the, the right target. So I would keep those guys on the bench. And on the other side, the Rams, you're starting Karrion Williams. That's for sure. I don't mind you starting Matthew Stafford. And then there's no doubt Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup are must-starts. They've earned it. And uh, that offense has been very solid overall for fantasy so far this year. Yep, it's been fun to watch them as well. Certain weeks, certain weeks they stink too. All right, last 4 o'clock game, the Bears heading to San Francisco uh, this week. San Francisco, I would think at this point, had the top waiver wire pickup of the week after Christian McCaffrey once again broke every fantasy football owner's heart that drafted him by leaving and Jordan Mason now on IR. Amazing what's happening there in San Francisco, too, and amazing at that running back position. But go ahead. What do you like? What do you not like? We're going to dig into that a little later in the show. Okay. What are you, you taught me what that, a, you call that a radio tease? Radio right? tease. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. I, I did it. You did, did it. it. Uh, yeah. Look, the 49ers are a mystery. That you know, you're going to start Debo as long as he's going. But the Jawan Jennings is a player that, for this week, I believe is startable. I'm going to give you that advice. He's very startable this week in a situation at home versus the Chargers in a must must win game. Excuse me, at home versus the Bears. Bears, right? You got to cross me up in a must must win. Okay, um, so Debo Jennings. And uh, the running back is a must start. We'll keep it there for now. On the other side, my God, I don't know what to do. And I say that with with love from my heart. The Bears are extremely hard to read. What happened from the first half of that game on against Detroit on Thanksgiving Day versus what happened in the second half are the tale of two different offenses, two different teams. Look, this is a week where a lot of teams are have to say F it. I'm going with Keenan Allen, okay? Because I just don't know which player I'm going to get. But right. at the same time, I have nobody else to start, and he provides that upside. So for me, DJ Moore is a must start. If you got to go with Keenan Allen, I understand why you're doing it. And DeAndre Swift is a, another one where, I, you know, yes, I understand yeah, if you have to give him a start. Caleb Williams, as a backup to any of the guys on a bye, is a compelling situation because I have that situation myself, and I'm still not sure what to do. But the talent is there. And now with the change of the offense and now the head coach being fired, I believe there could be a surge for the whole team. That's where I'm going with it. I think this could be a pick-me-up, if anything. So I am saying right now on this show, with San Francisco's defense not being great, especially against the run, so Swift go, maybe Caleb Williams is going to have one of those 50-60 to yard rushing games as well. Don't mind him being your backup quarterback for this week for your starter. Say it's a Stroud example, something like that. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, that Chicago offense, very interesting. I thought before the season that would be one of the high-powered offenses all year long, uh, and it's just been weird. Fired coach, the whole deal out there also. All right, two primetime games left in Week 14. Let's go to Sunday night, Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City hosting the Los Angeles Chargers. Who do you like? Who do you not like here as I check the weather as well for that game? Can you give me a weather report, or are you I not am, ready for I it? Am, I am going to it right now. Give me what you you keep talking, and I will tell you when I have the weather report. Fine. I, we could use a weather report because Kansas City at this time at night seems very, very chilly. But, man, one of the more incredible stories are the Chargers this year, 8-4. and four. Herbert looks so good. One interception. Right. The season. What is going on? That's ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous. Now, his yardages are down significantly, but they're making really good choices. It seems like a Jim Harbaugh type of offense in general, right? But ultimately, the wide receiver position only has one dude, and he was almost the nose pick of the week, Lad McConkey. I know. Start him. That's it. I've seen enough, man. I've seen enough. I've seen a quarterback locked into a wide receiver enough to say, start him. Other than that, guys, I don't know. 
The running back situation has three different players at all times. Gus, the bu- Gus, Vidal Sassoon. I don't even know who's there right now, or right. I do. But the point is, is it's very risky to start anybody with J.K. Dobbins now being out. And overall, whether it's Josh Palmer or Quinton Johnson, no. It's just Ladd McConkey, and if Justin Herbert's your quarterback, I'm okay with it too. Right. On the other end of the ball, Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City. I got some words for this too. It was a good run for Kareem Hunt. You started for like five to six weeks on many fantasy teams, and you were very productive. Yep. With Isaiah Pacheco back, Kareem Hunt's out. Yeah. All right, last week, he didn't get the usage. So if you're thinking about starting him, think again. He is not startable. Let's go there. Pacheco is startable. He's going to be probably an impact player. How soon? We'll see. But definitely startable. And then when it comes down to the uh, the weapons out there, man, Hopkins up and down, but I'm giving him a start this week. Kelsey, I'm giving a start. And outside of that, I'm not trusting Xavier Worthy or Hardman or anybody else there currently. So uh, Mahomes spreads the ball out quite a bit. Lot, lot, lots of balls going to the running backs but no consistency there. So Hopkins, definitely give him a go this week. I, I have a feeling prime time he's going to score the touchdown. Kelsey, you must start. Yeah. Yep. Uh, 58 degrees is the high, 37 is the low Sunday night. A warm up. Uh, I'm going in on Sunday. I, I was just about to say, the two games that we're worried about weather-wise both look like it's actually going to be absolute excellent football weather there from the football gods. Uh, let's go Monday night. Last game, week 14. Going to mean a lot to a lot of people in fantasy football because this is going to be the last game of week 14. Cincinnati, the Bengals heading to Dallas, AT&T Stadium. I don't have to check the weather there. It's going to be beautiful. What do you like? What do you not like, Cincinnati? Cincinnati and Dallas. I don't know if the weather matters in Dallas so much, does it? I mean, a little bit with that little, the uh, little thing that's open. Yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Unless it is an absolute snowstorm, I think they're okay. And the Bengals are such a weird team because I, I still know. here we come week fourteen, and I just absolutely love them fantasy wise. But I'm nervous because they're four and eight, and at what point do they just shut it down? They're not there yet, so all you got to do is hope. But my God, the weapons that I'm starting on this team. Joe Burrow, top, what, three fantasy quarterbacks. Start. Chase Brown, one of the best, youngest, brightest players quietly on the scene. Start him, Chase Brown. Jamar Chase, two chases. But Jamar Chase, best, best wide receiver to do it right now. Put him in the game. So then the question is, do you start yourself at T. Higgins or not? And that's going to be based on your lineup. I'm starting T. Higgins uh, week 14 of fantasy. So, Man, I'm just telling you right now, you start your your Cincinnati guys. But, you know, a Jacecki, for example, is not good enough to start. So you asked me to, you know, guys to bench, you don't, you don't want to give him a ride. Right. Then it's on the other side, much harder to, to plug down is this Dallas team. And uh, quite honestly, I'm just starting C.D. Lamb. That's it. I got nobody else. Dowdle all year long had the opportunity to take that job. Right. And hasn't really taken the job. I'm not starting many players on this team with Cooper Rush as the quarterback. C.D. Lamb is obviously a must start. But overall, the bust over the course of the season of some of these high players like C.D. Lamb, not his fault, not great. Tyreek Hill, maybe a little his fault, but no, you know, when t- went down, not great. Uh, oof, so at the end of the day, um, you've got to start those guys. But the production has not been there. Yeah, it's been stinky there, even for C.D. Lamb owners. It's like, just been bad. I'm getting to yeah. is how many CD Lamb owners right now are really, really, you know, in the hunt. Right. Now, I know they're sort in the of, hunt. Sort of, right. No, right. right. But you're not in first or second. No, because when I you're moving the second or third or fourth pick of the draft and getting same for Tariq owners, like you're getting that kind of production. Right. Week in and week out. He's had some good games, but he hasn't had the CD Lamb games that we're right. accustomed to or hoping he had this year. Think about this, too. Sidebar here while you just bring that up. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, Tyree Kill, C.D. Lamb, talking about three of the top four picks in every draft. You own any of those three guys, you're probably not in the playoffs at this point. I spaced on McCaffrey. I didn't. That's where, like, my brain was going. You finished it. That's why we've been doing this for a while. McCaffrey owners is the worst. This injury was horrifying for him. Horrifying. If you saw it, you knew immediately. Something popped immediately. The, The season is over. Concerned about the career. We're going to talk about that at another time. But if you had Christian McCaffrey with the one pick and you're making the playoffs, my hat's off to you. Seriously, my hat's off to you. Yeah. That's how 
you know, how hard it is to have the first overall or second overall pick likely first and not have him at all the entire year. And when you did have him for a few weeks, no production there at all. Yeah. So make it even worse. Yeah. Yep. You know what? You know what the sidebar is for that one? Kareem Hunt for about four or five weeks, like you said, as a Christian McCaffrey owner saved me and probably got me close to the playoffs, but I'm probably not going to make it because of the fact that I didn't have a guy every week putting 20 points up that should have been doing it every single week in fantasy. So yeah, C-Mac, but C-Mac, Tyreek, C.D. Lamb, think about the top couple picks, all these guys. You're better off to to hit a Derrick Henry with the number one overall pick or a Saquon Barkley at that Saquon point. Barker. Who would have ever thought? Oh, right? Who would ever? I mean, Listen, I think in my in in one of my leagues, the ten team league, the ten eleven pick was Derrick Henry Saquon Barkley. Stay winning, San Diego. Right? Like, good oh. God, it's crazy. All right, uh, that's the schedule for Week 14 with the NFL season. We went over last week's big uh, big fantasy leaders as well. We're at the end of week 14. Zach in the nose, you know what that means. It's time for the nose pick of the week. Highly anticipated. The last couple of weeks, nose has been on absolute fire, by the way, whether it's daily or whether you have one of these guys on your team or starting them. I'm excited to hear this week's big week nose pick of the week. I'm going to sit back, nose, the mic, the camera, everything is yours. So I wanted to do something that's fun because fantasy is fun, but it's also just how fantasy works. I wanted to go up with, and I teased it a few different times, a flat-out week 14, the week before the playoffs. You got to make the playoff push. Few teams didn't, you know, go in for a player. And then you wind up with Isaac Gurendo. I'm sorry for pushing his name and probably making him Latino. I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm sorry. But it's Gurendo to me. And you picked him up. And you are going to start him this week because as we said it, the, they have no Jordan Mason, they have no Christian McCaffrey, and they are a run first offense. And let me tell you, when this kid has had the opportunity to run the ball, he could break it, ladies and gentlemen. So if you had the luck, the skill, whatever it was to get him onto your roster, this is not a week to just see him go on the bench. At home versus the Bears, and it's going to be a cold, fun matchup, old school type of football. I want you to pick him up and start to get into your playoffs. Isaac Garendo. I just like the fact that if he has a big game or he's good the next couple of weeks, we're going to see that shimmy for the next couple of weeks. And I'm very, very excited about that. All right. That's going to do it for us. Week 14 of Zach and the Nose is in the books. Nosey, say goodbye to the people before I give everyone my sign off. Hi, right, people. This is it. Playoff push. Get there. Remember, enjoy it. Don't throw something through the window because of bad luck. Injuries are going to happen. Highs and lows, roller coasters. Just survive and advance to the best that you can. That's it. That's our advice here. Always survive and advance. All right. That's going to do it for us. For the nosy, I am Zach. This has been Krantz's Corner presents Zach and the Nose. I hope you have a great week in fantasy this week. I hope you make your big playoff push. I hope you score lots of points. I hope you knock that team out, the guy that you hate. I hope you're playing him this week, and I hope you knock him out of the playoffs. Unless you're playing me, and I hope your team literally burns in flames this week in Fantasy World, because I need wins, and I want to get to the money week. It's fantasy football time at its best as you make the push for the playoffs. So score a lot of points unless you're playing me, and I hope you lose. Otherwise, we'll speak to you next week, week 15, the beginning of the playoffs for a lot of leagues, and the push for a lot more next week here on Zach and the Nose. So for the Nose, I'm Zach. This has been Krantz's Corner. Zach and the Nose, week 14.